And now we're going to be continuing to talk about more advanced surface tools. We were just talking about the blend surface command. Now we're going to look at match surface. Now this is an interesting tool that will create a pretty dynamic blend between the two. I'll press my match tool, select the first, select the second. Now a lot of options come up. Preserve opposite end will mean that the opposite ends of these surfaces here and here will be unaffected. Match edges by closest points. These things can all be checked or none of them checked. For right now, let's just check preserve opposite end. Curvature, tangency, or position. We'll try curvature, press OK. And so that's how it looks. Now once again, let's try it a little differently. We'll try tangency this time. Pretty similar. Position. Now this time, quite a different look. The join was actually made by angling the first surface and joining it straight in as a corner. We'll choose Refine Match, Average Surfaces, go back to Tangency, as you can see, slightly different once again. These are two separate surfaces now. I can join them using the Join tool, but it's interesting to know that the shape of our surfaces has been changed. As opposed to a Flay tool, once I get my radius close enough, you'll notice that the fillet tool actually shortens crops or trims our surfaces but it doesn't actually change their shape the new shape is the bend here let me move my tool here a little closer so we've got a 10 spot radius between these two within 10 blocks the rebuild surface command is found down here pretty simple Degree, U and V, I just leave that unchanged. We can retrim. We can delete input, which means it will create a new one and delete the old one. We won't need the old one. Point count, this can be anything. The higher the number, the more complex. I'll press OK. Now the difference here, these look, of course, identical in my shaded preview. But if I was to take them and transform them with, for example, a bend tool, You'll notice my top surface didn't bend at all. The reason is, turn on my control points, it has only four points. Control points are what's needed to make the bend. There aren't enough here. It's sort of like trying to bend a piece of wood. It's just going to snap or not move at all. This one, however, much more flexible. A lot more control points to work with. Transform, bend, so we've got a nice bend in that. And that brings us to another tool, this one here, called Unroll Developable Surface. This is what you can use to actually flatten out a surface that's currently rolled up or bent. I'll press on that, press Enter, and so it's unrolled our surface here and placed it aligned within these two axes on the construction plane. And this surface here is every bit as complicated as this one. It's just simply been unrolled flat. And the last thing that I want to touch on quickly to do this, we're going to make another fillet. And let's join these objects here. Adjust surface and bulge. When I click that, I then locate a curve, in this case a curve on my surface. I click to start drawing a line, choose the end point here, and drag points to adjust end bulge. I have to click one of these points. As you can see, I'm having quite an effect here on the bulge of my shape. I'll 
I'll left click. Then I can click again to further customize the bulge in this curvature. Left click, and when I'm finished, I'm going to press enter. Well, let's take a look at what happened. As you can see, this is a pretty interesting tool, which can be kind of fun to play around with. Trial and error is how you're going to come up with interesting shapes with this tool. But it will work with any type of shape. For example, if I delete all of this, my sphere, which is also a surface, therefore, I can use any of these surface tools. And I'll try to select a curve here. Since it's not picking one up, let's try rebuilding. Now we've got a more complex sphere. Select curve or surface to adjust. And since my sphere is completely enclosed, we're unable to use that tool. The rebuilt sphere, however, in the same way that I rebuilt my single surface with the bend tool, is going to show a lot more complexity because of the increase in control points. Then I can always turn on my points, manipulate them manually to change the shape of my sphere. So whether you're using control points or the surface tools provided here, you can see there are a lot of different ways of manipulating the size and shape of your surfaces.